Hey friends, hey friends, hey friends, it's me Alana. Welcome back to my channel, The Awkward Book Nerd, for this video. You are all some flowers in a world full of weeds. Hey friends, it is me, Alana. Welcome back to my channel, The Awkward Book Nerd. For this video, I am going to be doing my March wrap up for you all. So in the month of March, I read four books, which I am so excited about because it means I'm slowly getting out of my slump that I was in during the winter season. And I'm hoping that as the year gets on, uh, I will read more and more and with this whole virus isolation thing happening I'm hoping this will also give me more time to read because I don't have really anything else to be doing at that at this point besides going to work so yeah that's all I'm gonna mention of that but I just wanted to show you what I read and talk about the books of course and do all the things that normally happens in a wrap-up so the first book I read in March was technically a book I was supposed to read in February, but I started it in February, but I didn't end it until March. So whatever, it works. But I read P.S. I Still Love You by Jenny Han. I read it because I really wanted to read the book before I watched the movie. Still haven't watched the movie, so I don't even know what I'm doing right now, but... I give this a four out of five stars. Uh, I really enjoyed the story. I enjoyed Laura Jean's perspective as always. I really do enjoy her as a character. I think the biggest issue I had was Peter. I am definitely a John Ambrose stan after reading this book and I just do not understand like the appeal of Peter. I, maybe it's because I'm a little older, so I'm not in high school anymore, so, like, I just, like, I'm, I'm not one of those people that really enjoys, like, pining over boys and stuff like that, like, I literally do not like doing that. Hey friends, editing Alana here. Um, I just wanted to clarify, like, I know in the video I said, like, I'm older, and so, like, I don't pine over boys and stuff like that and I've realized that that could be like totally taken the wrong way or maybe I'm just overthinking it but it, what I was trying to say was that like in high school I was never that type of person to pine over boys either so like maybe that's just something that like I just never like had experience doing so it just, it never really, like, reading this didn't, that part didn't really appeal to me, if that makes sense. And, like, not that I, and I wasn't trying to say that Laura was immature because I was older or anything like that. And, like, obviously not that anybody was thinking that I said that, but just in case that's, like, somehow interpreted that way. That's not how I meant it. It was just me saying, like, as I'm older looking back, like, me, like, I just don't see, I didn't see myself being that way. And again, maybe I'm wrong too on that part, who knows, but uh, just that just was not a portion of my life that I ever really, like that wasn't an aspect I ever really experienced, I guess. I don't know. I feel like I'm butchering this, but that's just me wanting to clarify just in case. <laughs> okay, bye. So I just, I couldn't understand like the manipulation of Peter. Like there's just an unhealthiness there that I just was not a big fan of. Like. Like, Peter would do things, and then it would somehow end up being Lord Jean's fault, but, like, I, just, I don't understand. <laughs> so, I'm definitely a John Ambrose fan. I am I know what the end goal of this trilogy is. I, like, literally do. But I part of me just hopes, like, as some, like, for some reason or somehow, John Ambrose will just sneak in at in the last book and just be like, steal your girl and basically claim Laura Jean and they live happily ever after because 
Right now, Peter is not doing it for me. Uh, I will keep an open mind for the third book, but I just, after reading this book, I'm like, I don't even know what I'm going to do. And I'm, uh, like, afraid to watch the movie at this point because, like, I just, uh, seeing it in action is gonna be a little scary. But still enjoyed it, still willing to finish it. Um, at some point this year, hopefully I will finish this trilogy. We'll see what the TPR jar gods will say to that. Um, but yeah, super excited that I finished this. And that's all I gotta really say. Alright, the next book I read was Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Jabowski. I actually listened to the audiobook of this and I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. I was thinking of reading it but then I was like ooh maybe the audiobook would be a little bit more interesting and it really was it doesn't really have chapters instead of like chapter numbers it just it's him writing letters and I really liked that because in the audiobook it just it's it seems like he's just speaking to you like he's writing you this letter about whatever is going on and you're sitting there and you're listening and you're like it feels like he's really talking to you and writing to you and stuff um I really enjoyed uh, his perspective, I loved, like, I, I enjoyed the movie, but it was definitely, like, I definitely still loved the book, too, just as much as the movie, maybe even a little bit more, and it, I definitely got emotional at times when he was talking about his depression or just, like, just how sad he was, like, I was just like, oh my gosh, I really so hard, and I just, like, it was just intriguing, and definitely when you got to the ending i loved that i i loved that i read like i was able to read the ending because in the movie like it happens like the ending happens and not that it's 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 different watching it and then like being there in his head when like he's talking about it and experiencing it so i definitely enjoyed the differences in that like um, when I know when I first watched the movie, I didn't really know what was happening at the end. Like it, it took me a couple more times to watch it to really understand what was going on. Whereas with the book, when I was reading it, I was like, "Oh, this is what was really going on. Like this is what he was feeling. This is what was happening." Kind of thing. Like though I understood, but like now I really understand. Kind of thing. So I enjoyed that. So in the audiobook, when you finish, there's like a forward, like a 10 years later kind of thing, or maybe it's 20 years later, I don't remember the number, but it's years later, and it's, 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 you assume it's Charlie, um, where he's writing you like that letter, that last letter, and it's like years later, and he's like, I bet you're wondering like how, like I've been in, and like what happened to Charlie and stuff like that and he kind of goes in and he, he doesn't give too many details but he's just like I'm good like I've appreciated your letters but I think it's kind of also like the viewpoint of the author maybe too I don't know for sure but at the end he said he says like along the lines of like I'm okay and you're gonna be okay too and I just like lost it because I was like <laughs> I really needed to hear that <laughs> Like, I don't know why, but it just, like, made me feel things. So, definitely super glad I finally read this. And just, I'm gl really glad I decided to do the audio because it was it was just so good. And the next book I read <laughs> was Renegades by Marissa Meyer. I have to thank Carrie for pushing me to read this because it was so good. <laughs> I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. I loved these characters so dang much. Oh my gosh. And the story. And I'm like, now I'm like, why did I never pick up a Marissa Meyer book before? Like, who knows? I'm crazy. But uh, in case you don't know, I don't know how you wouldn't know, but, but maybe you're like me where I'm always just like late to series and stuff like that. It's about a girl named Nova who grew up on the side of anarchists and Adrian, who grew up on the side of the Renegades. And they live in this world where it's superheroes and supervillains. So the superheroes are, they call themselves the Renegades. They're like a group, of, they're like an organization. And then the villains are called the Anarchists because uh, they were like big during the age of anarchy and all that kind of stuff. So in this world, uh, they grew up, like Novins and Adrian grew up on t like different sides of the law basically and 
it's cool because you get both of their perspectives and you're kind of seeing like how they like the 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 product of how they were raised so like on Nova's side, you see how she she humanizes the anarchists. Like, she grew up with them. Like, she's like, yes, they do bad things, but they're still people. They're still human. Whereas when you, like, when you're in Adrian's perspective, he, it's, it's like a new side of, like, these expectations that are placed on the renegades to do these things and be these things and um, all this kind of stuff. So it's, it was intriguing seeing those two different perspectives because, uh... You, you can't be biased towards one. I mean, you kind of can, but, like, it's hard. Because then you're like, well, I kind of see where each side is coming from. So Nova has this whole elaborate plan, which I won't tell you about because I don't know. I don't want to spoil this for you because I want you to experience the awesomeness like me. Uh, she has this whole plan to take down the anarchists because she wants revenge because of certain things that happened in her past. And there's a whole plot. The plot's taking place and just, like reading it and like the emotions and the people and like literally i had a lot of anxiety reading this not because of like anything bad but just because i'm like i love these people so much and i want them to do good things but i want them to be safe and i want them to be like happy it's so many things um i also was like <laughs> i one talked myself out of buying the second book to this and then the next day i bought the second book because i was like who am I kidding? I need to know what happens next. So hopefully I can start that at some point sometime soonish because I just, I loved this so much. <laughs> and I'm now I'm actually excited to try Cinder by Marissa Meyer and see if maybe I'll enjoy it just as much as I did this. So those are my feelings. <laughs> so the last book I read in March was The Disappearance of Sloan Sullivan by Gia Cribs. So I gave this a four out of five stars. I only gave it four stars because the ending really unsettled me and I can't explain why. I feel like it just wasn't as settled, as settled as I had wanted it to be. But I really did enjoy this read. It was crazy from the beginning. Like certain things were happening and I was like, what is going on? I thought this was one thing and it turned out to be another thing and yeah so if you don't know there's a, it's about this girl who uh is in witness protection and right now she's going by the name of sloan sullivan you don't really even know her real name until halfway through the book and so she moves to this new town with her handler and she runs into a guy she knew when she was a kid and so at first she's like freaking out because she's like oh my gosh I, he doesn't need to recognize me if he recognizes me we have to move um, but it doesn't seem like he does, so she just pretends that she, like, doesn't know him because, she, one, she doesn't want to move again because she's almost done, but, two, she, like, wants to be near someone who knew her because it's been a long time since she's, like, felt like her actual self and not, like, a new person every time. And so it's kind of her, like discovering her past self again and then also like figuring out what to do next because like eventually she's gonna age out of the system and I don't know there's just a lot of factors playing into this story where um it's like her like figuring out herself but also like figuring out herself outside of witness protection but also like deciding like does she want to, like, how does she want to proceed with the people who are after her? Like, does she want to just finally testify? Does she want to do something else? Like, all this kind of stuff. But there are a lot of factors that play into this that makes this the story kind of, like, explode halfway through. You're just like, I was not expecting all of these elements to come. I was expecting a simple story, and it just turned into something very complex. But I did enjoy it for the most part. I definitely recommend if you're looking for, like, a good thriller. I will say that the end, again, I'm also not a big fan of open-ended stories. So this one was kind of open-ended, and again, it left me unsettled. So we'll see. So those are the books I read in March. Hopefully you enjoy this video. If you liked it, please like it down below. If you have any comments on any of the books I've read, whether you've read them, whether you've liked them, whether you want to read them, all that kind of stuff, please put those down below. If you're not good at commenting, I'm going to go ahead and say leave me an emoji down below. I'm stealing the idea from my friend Sylvia from Wish Fulfillment. And if you want to see more videos from me, please subscribe down below. You are also flowers and a world full of weeds.